Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray together, saying, Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. And the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard this blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You are with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it all before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse. And he swore an earth, oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Betrayal. This passage continues the theme of missed opportunities. Jesus takes his disciples from the upper room into the garden 
a short walk away, where he prays passionately to the Father for the empowerment and enablement to continue his mission with success. He knew his betrayal was at hand. He already had warned Peter that he would betray him. Now, Peter's time had come. Would he remain true to Jesus and to his compassionate and to his passionate plea that he would never be disloyal to him? Peter claimed he was strong. Now, he and the rest of the disciples are at the crossroads of loyalty and betrayal. The test was taken, and the test was failed. As they saw the betrayer at hand, they seemed to follow the betrayer and not the Savior. How often in our lives do we seem to do this, too? Some questions to consider about this passage. What strengthens us to keep faith with those we care about? What tempts us to abandon them? Where or when have you felt abandoned? Where do you need the support of good friends? Who has needed you in the past? And who needs you right now? Let us pray together, saying, Lord God, protect us and preserve us in this world, that we might keep faith with the promises and responsibilities we have undertaken. And when we feel alone, remind us that you understand and have promised to be with us always, even to the end of time. Amen. My sisters and brothers, life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God, the God who made us, the God who loves us, the God who travels with us, be with you on this day and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.